You may like him, you may hate him, but either way, you cannot deny that Donald Trump has left quite a mark amassing his billion dollar empire over the past 40 years. When he stepped into the Oval Office in 2017, he had a net worth of $3.1 billion, making him the most wealthy president in US history, dethroning the former title holder, George Washington, who had a net worth of $525 million. In other words, Donald Trump entered office with almost four to six times as much wealth as George Washington. So, how does someone make that much money? The average person in the United States will make $1.7 million in their lifetime, meaning our president entered office with a net worth equivalent to what 1,823 people would make in their entire working career. What exactly was done in those 40 years to make that kind of money? You may have heard from Trump himself how he got his start in the real estate world. In reality, the $1 million loan he spoke of and his finances in general stem from a long history of generational wealth. To truly understand the origins of Trump's $3.1 billion net worth, we must take a step back, way back. Slap on your flapper dresses and shine your shoes, because we're going to travel back to the 1920s. It's a time of economic prosperity. People around the United States are dining on fine meals and even traveling for vacation for the very first time. It's during the Roaring Twenties when Fred Trump, Donald Trump's father, founds Elizabeth Trump and son with his mother. Built off the success of his late father, Frederick Trump, Fred would go on to buy and sell single-family homes for a profit. The first home bought by E. Trump and Son was an $800 investment, which was renovated and then sold for an astounding $7,000. As the need for housing increased, Fred would buy and sell hundreds of homes to the Charleston dancing, radio listening, cigarette smoking families of the 20s. Their business grew to be one of the most profitable in the US. With all that success, it seems like it would be smooth sailing once Donald came into the picture, doesn't it? Well, not exactly. The stock market crashed. Chaos ensued. Families across the United States were starving. And you know what people really don't want to do when they can't afford to feed their family? They don't want to buy a house. They can't buy a house. So, Elizabeth Trump and son went bankrupt. After a few years of struggling, they managed to purchase a grocery store. It wasn't until after the new deal was signed that they were back in business. And boy, were they back in business. Massive loans from the Federal Housing Association encouraged more companies like E. Trump and son to be built. They acquired a $26 million loan from the government and they built and built and and built. By 1944, Fred Trump had built dozens of expensive apartment buildings all over Manhattan. By the time Donald Trump was born in 1946, the Great Depression was nothing but a bad dream, a blip in the company's history. When Donald Trump was three, his father created a trust for his children, using a ground lease on his properties. The trust received $60,600 a year. Not bad earnings as a three-year-old, is it? However, as the late 50s and 60s rolled around, the massive business Fred had founded came under scrutiny. After being accused of profiteering off of federal housing loans and having a racial bias in his rental properties, the company was struggling to do business. And that, my friends, is when Donald Trump came into the picture. At the ripe old age of 22, Donald Trump took a front seat in his family's business. In 1971, he became president of the company, earning $200 $60,000 per year in salary. In 1972, the company managed to secure an $8 million loan to build Prospect Tower. Really, it was Donald's first property as president of the family business, so one might assume he wasn't earning that much. However, from shares and management fees alone, Donald was making an additional $300,000 per year on top of his salary just from that single building. By 1976, his net worth was listed at $200 million, though the majority of the properties attributed to him, Beach Haven, Shore Haven, Prospect Tower, and Trump Village, were all entirely developed 
by his father. Though he was lodging off of his father's business, Donald brought something entirely new to the company, an entire rebrand. Under his guidance, the decision was made that the Trump brand would be one of opulence, success, and luxury. To achieve this public perception, the company would buy old historic buildings and renovate them into modern palaces. In 1977, using a $3 million loan from his father, Donald began the first project under this rebrand. He purchased the Commodore Hotel in Manhattan and used the opportunity to really show the world the Trump brand for the first time. Using business tactics that would put him in front and center of the media. Using aggressive tactics, Trump managed to negotiate an unheard of 40-year tax abatement for the building with the city of New York. This move alone established him as a combative, no-nonsense dealmaker, and with it, gave the Trump brand the kind of positive media boost it had desperately needed. The Commodore was completed as the Grand Hyatt New York and unveiled in 1980. After $100 million worth of renovations, the Grand Hyatt became a blinding spectacle on East 42nd Street. Coated in a futuristic glass facade, the design of this hotel reflects opulence and signaled a new era of buildings that would be built on New York's skyline. From the Grand Hyatt alone, Trump made a $70 million profit, but things didn't stop there. Once you get a taste of money, mm, you need more. And that's exactly what he went after. In 1983, the Trump Tower was completed. A combination of retail, corporate, and residential suites, the entire project cost a startling $300 million. The construction of the building was wrought with controversy yet again. In order to construct the massive Trump Tower, the historic Bonwit Teller building was to be destroyed. A shining example of art deco architecture, many people in New York, including Mayor Ed Koch, were furious at Trump's decision to demolish the statues in incorporated into the building's architecture. Trump countered that removing the statues rather than demolishing them would cost half a million dollars, another clear example of the unattached, profit-focused business tactics he was known for at the time. Once Trump Tower was completed, Trump's organization's name was cemented even further into the city of New York. The 1980s were a decade of prosperity for Donald, his family, and the organization as a whole. It wasn't just because of the fancy buildings that were popping up all over New York. Trump's business tactics were the talk of the town. He was known as being an aggressive negotiator, constantly questioning and arguing with contractors over invoices and then refusing to pay until the job was completed, which gave him leverage to force contractors to take the lowest possible amount. The tactics, which many thought were unethical, only made him more and more popular in the media, and he was eating it up. Towards the tail end of the 1980s, he purchased Eastern Airlines, renaming it Trump Shuttle. This extravagant purchase was in addition to purchasing the world's second most expensive yacht and some of the world's most expensive helicopters. From the outside looking in, Trump had finally reached the role he had longed for. He was the symbol of luxury. He even started his new venture. He purchased the Taj Mahal Casino in 1988 for $273 million, looking to turn Atlantic City into the Las Vegas of the East. The 1980s were an era of Trump. He had the cars, the yachts, the hotels, the apartments, the shiny buildings with his name on them. He was on top of the world. That is, until he wasn't. The 1990s saw the collapse of several of Donald Trump's businesses and his marriage to his first wife, Ivana. When the Taj Mahal Casino and three other casinos he had purchased went bankrupt, Trump found himself owing billions of dollars. He was forced to sell off his airline, sell all his jets, and sell his yacht. In the midst of all this, Trump was caught cheating on his wife with a young actress named Marla. Trump's success was in jeopardy. But after years of practice, he figured a way to regain his losses. He spun the media and made sure he was everywhere. In response to the news of his affair, he fought to have this headline posted. If you think profiting off of his divorce that way is a unique decision, you might want to take a look at this 1995 Pizza Hut ad. After losing so much in the casinos, Trump knew making financial success in real estate was going to be a bit of a challenge. So, he entirely shifted gears and launched himself into the public eye like never before. There were board games, there were MTV commercials to appear to the youth, and then the entertainment era of Trump 
rose to the forefront. In 1996, he bought shares in Miss Universe, Miss USA, and Miss Teen USA. Launching off of that, he created Trump Modeling Management in 1999. Around the same time, Trump bought his first golf course for a startling $45 million. Though his earnings from the course have been rather hush-hush, it was reported in 2015 that over the course of 18 months, he was earning about $200 million from his 16 golf courses. By the end of the 1990s, Trump managed to be on top again. He spoke often about recovering from his debt, utilizing it as a stepping stone to garner more fame. In 2004, he continued pursuing entertainment as a source of income. You've probably seen it. It's a show that's probably woken you up on the couch. A show that created memes. A show that had us all running around and saying, you're fired. In the mid-2000s. On The Apprentice, Trump received $3 million per episode, earning him a startling $214 million for the run of the show. Of course, in reality, this role earned him a lot more. It further showcased his aggressive business mentality, giving him a huge weekly audience to essentially advertise his brand to. The mid-2000s brought on Trump University, Trump Mortgage, and Trump Stakes. Yes, Trump Stakes, three business ventures that would not survive to see his presidency, and one which would damage his wealth and public image. It would be one of his biggest losses since the casinos in the 90s. Trump University was an educational seminar program that was accused of defrauding thousands of students out of millions of dollars. Presented as educational classes, the university used a tier system for students, urging them to give more money to attend more classes without providing the information that was promised in the first place. After being sued for illegal business practices and racketeering, Trump settled for $25 million. Around this same time, Trump entered his bid for the presidency with a net worth of around $3.1 billion. Discussion of how he amassed his fortune was all over the news, and it was eventually revealed that the $1 million loan he received from his father was actually about $431 million over his lifetime. Does that make Fred the father of the century? Maybe so. Trump's made his money in dozens of ways, from beauty pageants to television shows to selling steaks and vodka with his name on it. His success can be attributed to his generational wealth, along with the ruthless business tactics that put him on the map. Either way, the Trump name is scattered on towers around the globe, written in our history books, and forever in the credits of late-night reality show reruns. So, there you have it, how Donald Trump earned his billions. What do you think of his road to success? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm Mr. Luxury, pip pip to doodly doo.